The Book of Enoch, chapters 72 to 107. The Book of the Courses of the Heavenly Luminaries. The Sun, chapter 72. The Book of the Courses of the Luminaries of the Heaven. The relations of each according to their classes, their dominion, and their seasons, according to their names and places of origin, and according to their months, which Uriel, the holy angel who was with me, who is their guide, showed me. And he showed me all their laws, exactly as they are, and how it is with regard to all the years of the world, and unto eternity, till the new creation is accomplished, which dureth till eternity. And this is the first law of the luminaries. The luminary, the sun, has its rising in the eastern portals of the heaven, and its setting in the western portals of the heaven. And I saw six portals in which the sun rises, and six portals in which the sun sets, and the moon rises and sets in these portals, and the leaders of the stars, and those whom they lead. Six in the east, and six in the west, all following each other in accurately corresponding order. Also, many windows to the right and left of these portals. And first, there goes forth the great luminary named the sun, and his circumference is like the circumference of the heaven, and he is quite filled with illuminating and heating fire. The chariot on which he ascends, the wind drives, and the sun goes down from the heaven and returns through the north in order to reach the east, and is so guided that he comes to the appropriate portal and shines in the face of the heaven. In this way he rises in the first month in the great portal, which is the fourth of those six portals in the east. And in that fourth portal from which the sun rises in the first month are twelve window openings, from which proceed a flame when they are opened in their season. When the sun rises in the heaven, he comes forth through that fourth portal thirty mornings in succession, and sets accurately in the fourth portal in the west of the heaven. And during this period the day becomes daily longer, and the night nightly shorter to the thirtieth morning. On that day the day is longer than the night by a ninth part, and the day amounts exactly to ten parts, and the night to eight parts. And the sun rises from that fourth portal, and sets in the fourth, and returns to the fifth portal of the east thirty mornings, and rises from it, and sets in the fifth portal. And then the day becomes longer by two parts, and amounts to eleven parts, and the night becomes shorter, and amounts to seven parts. And it returns to the east, and enters into the sixth portal, and rises and sets in the sixth portal, one and thirty mornings, on account of its sign. On that day, the day becomes longer than the night, and the day becomes double the night, and the day becomes twelve parts, and the night is shortened and becomes six parts. And the sun mounts up to make the day shorter and the night longer, and the sun returns to the east and enters into the sixth portal and rises from it, and sets thirty mornings. And when thirty mornings are accomplished, the day decreases by exactly one part, and becomes eleven parts, and the night seven. And the sun goes forth from that sixth portal in the west, and goes to the east, and rises in the fifth portal for thirty mornings, and sets in the west again in the fifth western portal. On that day, the day decreases by two parts, and amounts to ten parts, and the night to eight parts. And the sun goes forth from that fifth portal, and sets in the fifth portal of the west, and rises in the fourth portal for one and thirty mornings on account of its sign, and sets in the west. On that day, the day is equalized with the night, and becomes of equal length and the night amounts to nine parts, and the day to nine parts. And the sun rises from that portal, and sets in the west, and returns to the east, and rises thirty mornings in the third portal, 
and sets in the west in the third portal. And on that day, the night becomes longer than the day, and night becomes longer than night, and day shorter than day, till the thirtieth morning. And the night amounts exactly to ten parts, and the day to eight parts. And the sun rises from that third portal, and sets in the third portal in the west, and returns to the east, and for thirty mornings rises in the second portal in the east, and in like manner sets in the second portal in the west of the heaven. And on that day the night amounts to eleven parts, and the day to seven parts. And the sun rises on that day from that second portal, and sets in the west in the second portal, and returns to the east into the first portal for one and thirty mornings, and sets in the first portal in the west of the heaven. And on that day the night becomes longer, and amounts to double of the day, and the night amounts exactly to twelve parts, and the day to six. And the sun has therewith traversed the divisions of his orbit, and turns again on those divisions of his orbit, and enters that portal thirty mornings, and sets also in the west opposite to it. And on that night has the night decreased in length by a ninth part, and the night has become eleven parts, and the day seven parts. And the sun has returned and entered into the second portal in the east, and returns on those his divisions of his orbit for thirty mornings, rising and setting. And on that day the night decreases in length and the night amounts to ten parts, and the day to eight. And on that day the sun rises from that portal, and sets in the west, and returns to the east, and rises in the third portal for one and thirty mornings, and sets in the west of the heaven. On that day the night decreases, and amounts to nine parts, and the day to nine parts, and the night is equal to the day, and the year is exactly as to its days, three hundred and sixty-four. And the length of the day and of the night, and the shortness of the day and of the night arise. Through the course of the sun, these distinctions are made. So it comes that its course becomes daily longer, and its course nightly shorter. And this is the law, and the course of the sun, and his return as often as he returns, sixty times, and rises the great luminary which is named the sun, for ever and ever. And that which thus rises is the great luminary, and is so named according to its appearance, according as the Lord commanded. As he rises, so he sets, and decreases not, and rests not, but runs day and night. And his light is sevenfold brighter than that of the moon, but as regards size, they are both equal. Chapter 73 And after this law I saw another law dealing with the smaller luminary, which is named the moon. And her circumference is like the circumference of the heaven, and her chariot in which she rides is driven by the wind, and light is given to her in definite measure. And her rising and setting change every month and her days are like the days of the sun. And when her light is uniform, full, it amounts to the seventh part of the light of the sun. And thus she rises, and her first phase in the east comes forth on the thirtieth morning, and on that day she becomes visible, and constitutes for you the first phase of the moon on the thirtieth day, together with the sun in the portal where the sun rises and the one half of her goes forth by a seventh part, and her whole circumference is empty without light, with the exception of one seventh part of it, and the fourteenth part of her light. And when she receives one seventh part of the half of her light, her light amounts to one seventh part and the half thereof. And she sets with the sun. When the sun rises, the moon rises with him, and receives half of one part of light. And in that night, in the beginning of her morning, in the commencement of the lunar day, 
The moon sets with the sun, and is invisible that night, with the fourteen parts and the half of one of them. And she rises on that day, with exactly a seventh part, and comes forth and recedes from the rising of the sun. And in her remaining days she becomes bright in the remaining thirteen parts. Chapter 74 And I saw another course, a law for her, and how according to that law she performs her monthly revolution. And all these Uriel, the holy angel who is leader of them all, showed to me, and their positions. And I wrote down their positions as he showed them to me. And I wrote down their months as they were, and the appearance of their lights till fifteen days were accomplished. In single seventh parts she accomplishes all her light in the east, and in single seventh parts accomplishes all her darkness in the west. And in certain months she alters her settings, and in certain months she pursues her own peculiar course. In two months the moon sets with the sun, in those two middle portals, the third and the fourth. She goes forth for seven days, and turns about and returns again through the portal where the sun rises, and accomplishes all her light, and she recedes from the sun, and in eight days enters the sixth portal from which the sun goes forth. And when the sun goes forth from the fourth portal, she goes forth seven days, until she goes forth from the fifth, and turns back again in seven days into the fourth portal, and accomplishes all her light. And she recedes, and enters into the first portal in eight days. And she returns again in seven days unto the fourth portal, from which the sun goes forth. Thus I saw their position, how the moon rose and the sun set in those days. And if five years are added together, the sun has an overplus of thirty days, and all the days which accrue to it for one of those five years, when they are full, amount to three hundred and sixty-four days. And the overplus of the sun and of the stars amounts to six days. In five years, six days every year come to thirty days, and the moon falls behind the sun and stars to the number of thirty days. And the sun and the stars bring in all the years exactly, so that they do not advance or delay their position by a single day unto eternity, but complete the years with perfect justice in three hundred and sixty-four days. In three years there are one thousand and ninety-two days, and in five years one thousand eight hundred and twenty days, so that in eight years there are two thousand nine hundred and twelve days. For the moon alone the days amount in three years to one thousand and sixty-two days and in five years she falls fifty days behind, to the sum of one thousand seven hundred and seventy, there is to be added one thousand and sixty-two days. And in five years there are one thousand seven hundred and seventy days, so that for the moon the days in eight years amount to two thousand eight hundred and thirty-two days. For in eight years she falls behind to the amount of eighty days. All the days she falls behind in eight years are eighty. And the year is accurately completed in conformity with their world stations, and the stations of the sun, which rise from the portals, through which it, the sun, rises and sets thirty days. Chapter 75 and the leaders of the heads of the thousands, who are placed over the whole creation and over all the stars, have also to do with the four intercalary days, being inseparable from their office, according to the reckoning of the year. And these render service on the four days which are not reckoned in the reckoning of the year. And owing to them, men go wrong therein. For those luminaries truly render service on the world stations, one in the first portal, one in the third portal of the heaven, one in the fourth portal, and one in the sixth portal, 
and the exactness of the year is accomplished through its separate 364 stations. For the signs, and the times, and the years, and the days the angel Uriel showed to me, whom the Lord of glory hath set for ever over all the luminaries of the heaven, in the heaven and in the world, that they should rule on the face of the heaven, and be seen on the earth, and be leaders for the day and the night, the sun, moon, stars, and all the ministering creatures which make their revolution in all the chariots of the heaven. In like manner, twelve doors, Uriel showed me, open in the circumference of the sun's chariot in the heaven, through which the rays of the sun break forth, and from them is warmth diffused over the earth, when they are opened at their appointed seasons. And for the winds and the spirit of the dew, when they are opened, standing open in the heavens at the ends. As for the twelve portals in the heaven, at the ends of the earth, out of which go forth the sun, moon, and stars, and all the works of heaven in the east and in the west, there be many windows open to the left and right of them, and one window at its appointed season produces warmth, corresponding, as these do, to those doors from which the stars come forth according as he has commanded them, and wherein they set, corresponding to their number. And I saw chariots in the heaven, running in the world, above those portals in which revolve the stars that never set. And one is larger than all the rest, and it is that that makes its course through the entire world. The Twelve Windows and Their Portals Chapter 76 And at the ends of the earth I saw twelve portals open to all the quarters of the heaven, from which the winds go forth and blow over the earth. Three of them are open on the face, the east of the heavens, and three in the west, and three on the right, the south of the heaven, and three on the left, the north. And the three first are those of the east, and the three are of the north, and three, after those on the left, of the south, and three of the west. Through four of these come winds of blessing and prosperity, and from those eight come hurtful winds. When they are sent, they bring destruction on all the earth, and on the water upon it, and on all who dwell thereon, and on everything which is in the water, and on the land. And the first wind from these portals, called the east wind, comes forth through the first portal which is in the east, inclining towards the south. From it come forth desolation, drought, heat, and destruction. And through the second portal in the middle comes what is fitting, and from it there come rain, and fruitfulness, and prosperity, and dew. And through the third portal, which lies toward the north, come cold and drought. And after these come forth the south winds through three portals. Through the first portal of them, inclining to the east, comes forth a hot wind. And through the middle portal next to it come forth fragrant smells, and dew and rain, and prosperity and health. And through the third portal, lying to the west, come forth dew and rain, locusts and desolation. And after these, the north winds. From the seventh portal in the east come dew and rain, locusts, and desolation. And from the middle portal come in direct direction health, and rain, and dew, and prosperity. And through the third portal in the west come cloud, and hoarfrost, and snow, and rain, and dew, and locusts. And after these four, are the west winds. Through the first portal adjoining the north come forth dew and hoarfrost and cold and snow and frost. And from the middle portal come forth dew and rain and prosperity and blessing. And through the last portal which adjoins the south come forth drought and desolation and burning and destruction. And the twelve portals of the four quarters of the heaven are therewith completed and all their laws, and all their plagues, and all their benefactions, have I shown to thee, 
my son, Methuselah. The four quarters of the world, the seven mountains, the seven rivers. Chapter 77 And the first quarter is called the east, because it is the first, and the second, the south, because the Most High will descend there. Yea, there, in quite a special sense, will he who is blessed for ever descend. And the west quarter is named the diminished, because there all the luminaries of heaven wane and go down. And the fourth quarter, named the north, is divided into three parts. The first of them is for the dwelling of men, the second contains seas of water, and the abysses and forests and rivers and darkness and clouds. And the third part contains the garden of righteousness. I saw seven high mountains, higher than all the mountains which are on the earth. And thence comes forth hoarfrost, and days, seasons, and years pass away. I saw seven rivers on the earth, larger than all the rivers. One of them, coming from the west, pours its waters into the great sea. And these two come from the north to the sea, and pour their waters into the Erythraean Sea in the east. And the remaining four come forth on the side of the north to their own sea, two of them to the Erythraean Sea, and two into the great sea, and discharge themselves there, and some say, into the desert. Seven great islands I saw in the sea, and in the mainland, two in the mainland, and five in the great sea. The Sun and Moon, the Waxing and Waning of the Moon Chapter 78 And the names of the sun are the following. The first, Orjares, and the second, Tomas. And the moon has four names. The first name is Asonja, the second, Ebla, the third, Benase, and the fourth, Erae. These are the two great luminaries. Their circumference is like the circumference of the heaven, and the size of the circumference of both is alike. In the circumference of the sun, there are seven portions of light, which are added to it more than to the moon, and in definite measures it is transferred till the seventh portion of the sun is exhausted. And they set and enter the portals of the west, and make their revolution by the north, and come through the eastern portals on the face of the heaven. And when the moon rises, one fourteenth part appears in the heaven. The light becomes full in her. On the fourteenth day she accomplishes her light. And fifteen parts of the light are transferred to her, till the fifteenth day when her light is accomplished, according to the sign of the year. And she becomes fifteen parts, and the moon grows by the addition of fourteen parts. And in her waning, the moon decreases on the first day to fourteen parts of her light, on the second to thirteen parts of light, on the third to twelve, on the fourth to eleven, on the fifth to ten, on the sixth to nine, on the seventh to eight, on the eighth to seven, on the ninth to six, on the tenth to five, on the eleventh to four, on the twelfth to three, on the thirteenth to two, on the fourteenth to the half of a seventh and all her remaining light disappears wholly on the fifteenth. And in certain months the month has twenty-nine days, and once twenty-eight. And Euro showed me another law. When light is transferred to the moon, and on which side it is transferred to her by the sun, during all the period during which the moon is growing in her light, she is transferring it to herself when opposite to the sun, during fourteen days, her light is accomplished in the heaven, and when she is illumined throughout, her light is accomplished full in the heaven. And on the first day, she is called the new moon, for on that day the light rises upon her. She becomes full moon exactly on the day when the sun sets in the west, and from the east she rises at night, and the moon shines the whole night through till the sun rises 
over against her, and the moon is seen over against the sun. On the side whence the light of the moon comes forth, there again she wanes, till all the light vanishes, and all the days of the month are at an end, and her circumference is empty, void of light. And three months she makes of thirty days, and at a time she makes three months of twenty-nine days each, in which she accomplishes her waning in the first period of time, and in the first portal for one hundred and seventy-seven days. And in the time of her going out, she appears for three months of thirty days each, and for three months she appears of twenty-nine each. At night she appears like a man for twenty days each time, and by day she appears like the heaven, and there is nothing else in her save her light. Recapitulation of Several of the Laws Chapter 79 And now, my son, I have shown thee everything, and the law of all the stars of the heaven is completed. And he showed me all the laws of these for every day, and for every season of bearing rule, and for every year, and for its going forth, and for the order prescribed to it every month and every week, and the waning of the moon which takes place in the sixth portal. For in this sixth portal her light is accomplished, and after that there is the beginning of the waning. And the waning which takes place in the first portal in its season till one hundred and seventy-seven days are accomplished, reckoned according to weeks, twenty-five weeks, and two days. She falls behind the sun and the order of the stars exactly five days in the course of one period, and when this place which thou seest has been traversed. Such is the picture and sketch of every luminary which Uriel the archangel, who is their leader, showed unto me. Chapter 80 And in those days the angel Uriel answered and said to me, Behold, I have shown thee everything, Enoch, and I have revealed everything to thee that thou shouldst see this sun and this moon and the leaders of the stars of the heaven and all those who turn them, their tasks and times and departures. Perversion of nature and the heavenly bodies, owing to the sin of man. And in the days of the sinners, the years shall be shortened, and their seed shall be tardy on their lands and fields, and all things on the earth shall alter, and shall not appear in their time. And the rain shall be kept back, and the heaven shall withhold it. And in those times the fruits of the earth shall be backward, and shall not grow in their time, and the fruits of the trees shall be withheld in their time and the moon shall alter her order, and not appear at her time. And in those days the sun shall be seen, and he shall journey in the evening on the extremity of the great chariot in the west, and shall shine more brightly than accords with the order of light. And many chiefs of the stars shall transgress the order prescribed, and these shall alter their orbits and tasks, and not appear at the seasons prescribed to them. And the whole order of the stars shall be concealed from the sinners, and the thoughts of those on the earth shall err concerning them, and they shall be altered from all their ways. Yea, they shall err, and take them to be gods. And evil shall be multiplied upon them, and punishment shall come upon them, so as to destroy all. The Heavenly Tablets and the Mission of Enoch Chapter 81 And he said unto me, Observe, Enoch, these heavenly tablets, and read what is written thereon, and mark every individual fact. And I observed the heavenly tablets, and read everything which was written thereon, and understood everything, and read the book of all the deeds of mankind, and of all the children of flesh that shall be upon the earth to the remotest generations. And forthwith I blessed the great Lord, the King of glory for ever, in that he has made all the works of the world. And I extolled the Lord because of his patience, and blessed him because of the children of men. And after that I said, Blessed is the man who dies in righteousness and goodness, 
concerning whom there is no book of unrighteousness written, and against whom no day of judgment shall be found. And those seven holy ones brought me, and placed me on the earth before the door of my house, and said to me, Declare everything to thy son Methuselah, and show to all thy children that no flesh is righteous in the sight of the Lord, for he is their creator. One year we will leave thee with thy son, till thou givest thy last commands, that thou mayest teach thy children, and record it for them, and testify to all thy children. And in the second year they shall take thee from their midst. Let thy heart be strong, for the good shall announce righteousness to the good. The righteous with the righteous shall rejoice, and shall offer congratulation to one another. But the sinners shall die with the sinners, and the apostate go down with the apostate. And those who practice righteousness shall die on account of the deeds of men, and be taken away on account of the doings of the godless. And in those days they ceased to speak to me, and I came to my people, blessing the Lord of the world. Charge given to Enoch the four intercalary days, the stars which lead the seasons and the months. Chapter 82 And now, my son Methuselah, all these things I am recounting to thee and writing down for thee, and I have revealed to thee everything and given thee books concerning all these. So preserve, my son Methuselah, the books from thy father's hand and see that thou deliver them to the generations of the world. I have given wisdom to thee and to thy children, and thy children that shall be to thee, that they may give it to their children for generations, this wisdom, namely, that passeth their thought. And those who understand it shall not sleep, but shall listen with the ear, that they may learn this wisdom. And it shall please those that eat thereof better than good food. Blessed are all the righteous. Blessed are all those who walk in the way of righteousness and sin, not as the sinners, in the reckoning of all their days in which the sun traverses the heaven, entering into and departing from the portals for thirty days with the heads of thousands of the order of the stars, together with the four which are intercalated, which divide the four portions of the year, which lead them and enter them with four days. Owing to them, men shall be at fault, and not reckon them in the whole reckoning of the year. Yea, men shall be at fault, and not recognize them accurately, for they belong to the reckoning of the year, and are truly recorded thereon for ever, one in the first portal, and one in the third, and one in the fourth, and one in the sixth, and the year is completed in three hundred and sixty-four days and the account thereof is accurate, and the recorded reckoning thereof exact. For the luminaries and months and festivals and years and days has Uriel shown and revealed to me, to whom the Lord of the whole creation of the world hath subjected the host of heaven. And he has power over night and day in the heaven to cause the light to give light to men, sun, moon, and stars, and all the powers of the heaven which revolve in their circular chariots. And these are the orders of the stars, which set in their places, and in their seasons, and festivals, and months. And these are the names of those who lead them, who watch that they enter at their times, in their orders, in their seasons, in their months, in their periods of dominion, and in their positions. Therefore leaders who divide the four parts of the year enter first, and after them the twelve leaders of the orders who divide the months. And for the three hundred and sixty days there are heads over thousands who divide the days. And for the four intercalary days there are the leaders which sunder the four parts of the year. And these heads over thousands are intercalated between leader and leader, each behind a station, but their leaders make the division. And these are the names of the leaders who divide the four parts of the year which are ordained. Milkiel, Helemelech, 
and Melagel, and Narel, and the names of those who lead them, Adnarel, and I Jasuael, and Alomael. These three follow the leaders of the orders. And there is one that follows the three leaders of the orders, which follow those leaders of stations that divide the four parts of the year. In the beginning of the year, Melkajal rises first and rules, who is named Tamenai, and the sun and all the days of his dominion while he bears rule are ninety-one days. And these are the signs of the days which are to be seen on earth in the days of his dominion, sweat and heat and calms, and all the trees bear fruit, and leaves are produced on all the trees, and the harvest of wheat and the rose flowers, and all the flowers which come forth in the field, but the trees of the winter season become withered. And these are the names of the leaders which are under them, Burkael, Zelebsel, and another who is added ahead of a thousand called Hilujaseph. And the days of the dominion of this leader are at an end. The next leader after him is Helemelek, whom one names the Shining Sun, and all the days of his light are ninety-one days. And these are the signs of his days on the earth, glowing heat and dryness, and the trees ripen their fruits and produce all their fruits ripe and ready. And the sheep pair and become pregnant, and all the fruits of the earth are gathered in, and everything that is in the fields and the winepress, these things take place in the days of his dominion. These are the names and the orders and the leaders of those heads of thousands, Gidayajal, Kiel, and Hiel, and the name of the head of a thousand which is added to them, Asphael, and the days of his dominion are at an end. The Dream Visions First Dream Vision on the Deluge Chapter 83 And now, my son Methuselah, I will show thee all my visions which I have seen, recounting them before thee. Two visions I saw before I took a wife, and one was quite unlike the other. The first, when I was learning to write. The second, before I took thy mother, when I saw a terrible vision. And regarding them, I prayed to the Lord. I had laid me down in the house of my grandfather Mahalalel, when I saw in a vision how the heaven collapsed, and was borne off and fell to the earth. And when it fell to the earth, I saw how the earth was swallowed up in a great abyss. And mountains were suspended on mountains, and hills sank down on hills, and high trees were rent from their stems, and hurled down and sunk in the abyss. And thereupon a word fell into my mouth, and I lifted up my voice to cry aloud, and said, The earth is destroyed. And my grandfather, Mahalalel, waked me as I lay near him, and said unto me, Why dost thou cry so, my son? And why dost thou make such lamentation? And I recounted to him the whole vision which I had seen. And he said unto me, A terrible thing hast thou seen, my son, and of grave moment is thy dream vision as to the secrets of all the sin of the earth. It must sink into the abyss and be destroyed with a great destruction. And now, my son, arise, and make petition to the Lord of glory, since thou art a believer, that a remnant may remain on the earth, and that he may not destroy the whole earth. My son, from heaven all this will come upon the earth, and upon the earth there will be great destruction. After that I rose, and prayed, and implored, and besought, and wrote down my prayer for the generations of the world. And I will show everything to thee, my son, Methuselah. And when I had gone forth below, and seen the heaven, and the sun rising in the east, and the moon setting in the west, and a few stars, and the whole earth, and everything as he had known it in the beginning, then I blessed the Lord of Judgment, and extolled him, because he had made the sun to go forth from the windows of the east. And he ascended, and rose on the face of the heaven, and set out, and kept traversing the path shown unto him. 
Chapter 84 And I lifted up my hands in righteousness, and blessed the Holy and Great One, and spake with the breath of my mouth, and with the tongue of flesh, which God has made for the children of the flesh of men, that they should speak therewith. And he gave them breath, and a tongue, and a mouth, that they should speak therewith. Blessed be thou, O Lord, King, great and mighty in thy greatness, Lord of the whole creation of the heaven, King of kings, and God of the whole world. And thy power and kingship and greatness abide for ever and ever, and throughout all generations thy dominion, and all the heavens are thy throne for ever, and the whole earth thy footstool for ever and ever. For thou hast made, and thou rulest all things, and nothing is too hard for thee. Wisdom departs not from the place of thy throne, nor turns away from thy presence. And thou knowest, and seest, and hearest everything, and there is nothing hidden from thee, for thou seest everything. And now the angels of thy heavens are guilty of trespass, and upon the flesh of men abideth thy wrath until the great day of judgment. And now, O God and Lord and great King, I implore and beseech thee to fulfill my prayer, to leave me a posterity on earth, and not destroy all the flesh of man, and make the earth without inhabitant, so that there should be an eternal destruction. And now, my Lord, destroy from the earth the flesh which has aroused thy wrath, but the flesh of righteousness and uprightness establish as a plant of the eternal seed, and hide not thy face from the prayer of thy servant, O Lord. The Second Dream Vision of Enoch The History of the World to the Founding of the Messianic Kingdom Chapter 85 And after this I saw another dream, and I will show the whole dream to thee, my son. And Enoch lifted up his voice and spake to his son Methuselah, to thee, my son, will I speak. Hear my words. Incline thine ear to the dream vision of thy father. Before I took thy mother, Edna, I saw in a vision on my bed, and behold, a bull came forth from the earth, and that bull was white, and after it came forth a heifer, and along with this latter came forth two bulls, one of them black and the other red. And the black bull gored the red one, and pursued him over the earth, and thereupon I could no longer see that red bull. But that black bull grew, and that heifer went with him, and I saw that many oxen proceeded from him, which resembled and followed him. And that cow, that first one, went from the presence of that first bull in order to seek that red one, but found him not, and lamented with a great lamentation over him, and sought him. And I looked till that first bull came to her and quieted her, and from that time onward she cried no more. And after that she bore another white bull, and after him she bore many bulls and black cows. And I saw in my sleep that white bull likewise grow and become a great white bull, and from him proceeded many white bulls, and they resembled him. And they began to beget many white bulls, which resembled them, one following the other, even many. The Fall of the Angels and the Demoralization of Mankind Chapter 86 And again I saw with mine eyes as I slept, and I saw the heaven above, and behold a star fell from heaven, and it arose and ate and pastured among those oxen. And after that I saw the large and the black oxen, and behold, they all changed their stalls and pastures and their cattle, and they began to live with each other. And again I saw in the vision, and looked towards heaven, and behold, I saw many stars descend, and cast themselves down from heaven to that first star, and they became bulls amongst those cattle and pastured amongst them. And I looked at them, and saw, and behold, they all let out their privy members like horses, and began to cover the cows of the oxen, 
and they all became pregnant and bare elephants, camels, and asses. And all the oxen feared them and were affrighted at them and began to bite with their teeth and to devour and to gore with their horns. And they began, moreover, to devour those oxen. And behold, all the children of the earth began to tremble and quake before them and to flee from them. Chapter 87 And again I saw how they began to gore each other and to devour each other, and the earth began to cry aloud. And I raised mine eyes again to heaven, and I saw in the vision. And behold, there came forth from heaven beings who were like white men, and four went forth from that place, and three with them. And those three that had last come forth grasped me by the hand and took me up away from the generations of the earth and raised me up to a lofty place and showed me a tower raised high above the earth and all the hills were lower. And one said unto me, Remain here till thou seest everything that befalls those elephants, camels, and asses, and the stars, and the oxen, and all of them. The Punishment of the Fallen Angels by the Archangels Chapter 88 And I saw one of those four who had come forth first, and he seized that first star which had fallen from the heaven, and bound it hand and foot, and cast it into an abyss. Now that abyss was narrow and deep, and horrible, and dark. And one of them drew a sword, and gave it to those elephants and camels and asses. Then they began to smite each other, and the whole earth quaked because of them. And as I was beholding in the vision, lo, one of those four who had come forth stoned them from heaven, and gathered and took all the great stars, whose privy members were like those of horses, and bound them all hand and foot, and cast them in an abyss of the earth. The Advent of the Seven Archangels Chapter 89 The Deluge and the Deliverance of Noah And one of those four went to that white bull and instructed him in a secret, without his being terrified. He was born a bull and became a man, and built for himself a great vessel and dwelt thereon. And three bulls dwelt with him in that vessel, and they were covered in. And again I raised mine eyes towards heaven, and saw a lofty roof with seven water torrents thereon. And those torrents flowed with much water into an enclosure. And I saw again, and behold, fountains were opened on the surface of that great enclosure, and that water began to swell and rise upon the surface. And I saw that enclosure till all its surface was covered with water. And the water, the darkness, and mist increased upon it. And as I looked at the height of that water, the water had risen above the height of that enclosure, and was streaming over that enclosure, and it stood upon the earth. And all the cattle of that enclosure were gathered together, until I saw how they sank, and were swallowed up, and perished in that water. But that vessel floated on the water, while all the oxen and elephants and camels and asses sank to the bottom with all the animals, so that I could no longer see them, and they were not able to escape, but perished and sank into the depths. And again I saw in the vision, till those water torrents were removed from that high roof, and the chasms of the earth were leveled up, and other abysses were opened. Then the water began to run down into these, till the earth became visible. But that vessel settled on the earth, and the darkness retired, and light appeared. But that white bull, which had become a man, came out of that vessel, and the three bulls with him. And one of those three was white, like that bull, and one of them was red as blood, and one black. And that white bull departed from them. From the Death of Noah to the Exodus 
And they began to bring forth beasts of the field and birds, so that there arose different genera, lions, tigers, wolves, dogs, hyenas, wild boars, foxes, squirrels, swines, falcons, vultures, kites, eagles, and ravens. And among them was born a white bull. And they began to bite one another. But the white bull which was born amongst them begat a wild ass, and a white bull with it, and the wild asses multiplied. But that bull which was born from him begat a black wild boar, and a white sheep, and the former begat many boars, but that sheep begat twelve sheep. And when those twelve sheep had grown, they gave up one of them to the asses, and those asses again gave up that sheep to the wolves, and that sheep grew up among the wolves. And the Lord brought the eleven sheep to live with it and to pasture with it among the wolves. And they multiplied and became many flocks of sheep. And the wolves began to fear them, and they oppressed them until they destroyed their little ones, and they cast their young into a river of much water. But those sheep began to cry aloud on account of their little ones, and to complain unto their Lord. And a sheep which had been saved from the wolves fled and escaped to the wild asses. And I saw the sheep, how they lamented and cried and besought their Lord with all their might, till that Lord of the sheep descended at the voice of the sheep from a lofty abode, and came to them and pastured them. And he called that sheep which had escaped from the wolves, and spake with it concerning the wolves, that it should admonish them not to touch the sheep. And the sheep went to the wolves according to the word of the Lord. And another sheep met it and went with it, and the two went and entered together into the assembly of those wolves, and spake with them, and admonished them not to touch the sheep from henceforth. And thereupon I saw the wolves, and how they oppressed the sheep exceedingly with all their power. And the sheep cried aloud. And the Lord came to the sheep, and they began to smite those wolves. And the wolves began to make lamentation, but the sheep became quiet, and forthwith ceased to cry out. And I saw the sheep till they departed from amongst the wolves. But the eyes of the wolves were blinded, and those wolves departed in pursuit of the sheep with all their power. And the Lord of the sheep went with them as their leader, and all his sheep followed him. And his face was dazzling and glorious and terrible to behold. But the wolves began to pursue those sheep till they reached a sea of water. And that sea was divided, and the water stood on this side and on that before their face. And the Lord led them and placed himself between them and the wolves. And as those wolves did not yet see the sheep, they proceeded into the midst of that sea, and the wolves followed the sheep. And those wolves ran after them into that sea. And when they saw the Lord of the sheep, they turned to flee before his face. But that sea gathered itself together and became as it had been created. And the water swelled and rose till it covered those wolves. And I saw till all the wolves who pursued those sheep perished and were drowned. Israel in the Desert, the Giving of the Law, the Entrance into Palestine But the sheep escaped from that water, and went forth into a wilderness, where there was no water and no grass, and they began to open their eyes and to see. And I saw the Lord of the sheep pasturing them, and giving them water and grass, and that sheep going and leading them, and that sheep ascended to the summit of that lofty rock, and the Lord of the sheep sent it to them. And after that I saw the Lord of the sheep who stood before them, and his appearance was great and terrible and majestic, and all those sheep saw him and were afraid before his face, and they all feared and trembled because of him, and they cried to that sheep with them which was amongst them, We are not able to stand before the Lord or to behold him. And that sheep which led them again ascended to the summit of that rock. But the sheep began to be blinded and to wander from the way which he had showed them. 
but that sheep wot not thereof. And the lord of the sheep was wrathful exceedingly against them, and that sheep discovered it, and went down from the summit of the rock, and came to the sheep, and found the greatest part of them blinded and fallen away. And when they saw it, they feared and trembled at its presence, and desired to return to their folds. And that sheep took other sheep with it, and came to those sheep which had fallen away, and began to slay them, and the sheep feared its presence, and thus that sheep brought back those sheep that had fallen away, and they returned to their folds. And I saw in this vision till that sheep became a man, and built a house for the lord of the sheep, and placed all the sheep in that house. And I saw till this sheep which had met that sheep which led them fell asleep, and I saw till all the great sheep perished, and little ones arose in their place, and they came to a pasture and approached a stream of water. Then that sheep, their leader, which had become a man, withdrew from them and fell asleep. And all the sheep sought it and cried over it with a great crying. And I saw till they left off crying for that sheep and crossed that stream of water. And there arose the two sheep as leaders in the place of those which had led them and fallen asleep. And I saw till the sheep came to a goodly place, and a pleasant and glorious land. And I saw till those sheep were satisfied, and that house stood amongst them in a pleasant land. From the time of the judges till the building of the temple. And sometimes their eyes were opened, and sometimes blinded, till another sheep arose, and led them and brought them all back, and their eyes were opened. And the dogs, and the foxes, and the wild boars began to devour those sheep, till the lord of the sheep raised up another sheep, a ram from their midst, which led them. And that ram began to butt on either side, those dogs, foxes, and wild boars, till he had destroyed them all. And that sheep whose eyes were opened saw that ram which was amongst the sheep, till it forsook its glory, and began to butt those sheep, and trampled upon them, and behaved itself unseemly. And the lord of the sheep sent the lamb to another lamb, and raised it up to being a ram and leader of the sheep instead of that ram which had forsaken its glory. And it went and spake to it alone, and raised it to being a ram, and made it the prince and leader of the sheep. But during all these things those dogs oppressed the sheep. And the first ram pursued that second ram, and that second ram arose and fled before it. And I saw till those dogs pulled down the first ram, and that second ram arose and led the little sheep. And those sheep grew and multiplied, but all the dogs and foxes and wild boars feared and fled before it. And that ram butted and killed the wild beasts, and those wild beasts had no longer any power among the sheep, and robbed them no more of aught. And that ram begat many sheep and fell asleep. And a little sheep became ram in its stead, and became prince and leader of those sheep. And that house became great and broad, and it was built for those sheep. And a tower, lofty and great, was built on the house for the lord of the sheep. And that house was low, but the tower was elevated and lofty. And the lord of the sheep stood on that tower, and they offered a full table before him. The Two Kingdoms of Israel and Judah to the Destruction of Jerusalem and again I saw those sheep that they again erred and went many ways, and forsook their house. And the lord of the sheep called some from amongst the sheep, and sent them to the sheep. But the sheep began to slay them. And one of them was saved, and was not slain. And it sped away, and cried aloud over the sheep, and they sought to slay it. But the lord of the sheep saved it from the sheep, and brought it up to me 
and caused it to dwell there. And many other sheep he sent to those sheep to testify unto them and lament over them. And after that I saw that when they forsook the house of the Lord and his tower, they fell away entirely, and their eyes were blinded. And I saw the Lord of the sheep, how he wrought much slaughter amongst them in their herds, until those sheep invited that slaughter, and betrayed his place. And he gave them over into the hands of the lions, and tigers, and wolves, and hyenas, and into the hand of the foxes, and to all the wild beasts, and those wild beasts began to tear in pieces those sheep. And I saw that he forsook that their house, and their tower, and gave them all into the hand of the lions, to tear and devour them into the hand of all the wild beasts. And I began to cry aloud with all my power, and to appeal to the Lord of the sheep, and to represent to him in regard to the sheep that they were devoured by all the wild beasts. But he remained unmoved, though he saw it, and rejoiced that they were devoured and swallowed and robbed, and left them to be devoured in the hand of all the beasts. And he called seventy shepherds, and cast those sheep to them that they might pasture them. And he spake to the shepherds and their companions, Let each individual of you pasture the sheep henceforward, and everything I shall command you, that do ye. And I will deliver them over unto you, duly numbered, and tell you which of them are to be destroyed, and them destroy ye. And he gave over unto them those sheep. And he called another, and spake unto him, Observe and mark everything that the shepherds will do to those sheep, for they will destroy more of them than I have commanded them. And every excess and the destruction which will be wrought through the shepherds record, namely, how many they destroy, according to my command, and how many according to their own caprice. Record against every individual shepherd all the destruction he effects. And read out before me by number how many they destroy, and how many they deliver over for destruction, that I may have this as a testimony against them, and know every deed of the shepherds, that I may comprehend and see what they do, whether or not they abide by my command, which I have commanded them. But they shall not know it, and thou shalt not declare it to them, nor admonish them, but only record against each individual all the destruction which the shepherds effect, each in his time, and lay it all before me. And I saw till those shepherds pastored in their season, and they began to slay and to destroy more than they were bidden, and they delivered those sheep into the hand of the lions. And the lions and tigers eat, and devoured the greater part of those sheep, and the wild boars eat along with them, and they burnt that tower, and demolished that house. And I became exceedingly sorrowful over that tower, because that house of the sheep was demolished. And afterwards I was unable to see if those sheep entered that house. First Period of the Angelic Rulers From the Destruction of Jerusalem to the Return from the Captivity And the shepherds and their associates delivered over those sheep to all the wild beasts to devour them and each one of them received in his time a definite number. It was written by the other in a book how many each one of them destroyed of them, and each one slew and destroyed many more than was prescribed. And I began to weep and lament on account of those sheep. And thus in the vision I saw that one who wrote, how he wrote down every one that was destroyed by those shepherds day by day, and carried up and laid down, and showed actually the whole book to the Lord of the sheep, even everything that they had done, and all that each one of them had made away with, and all that they had given over to destruction. And the book was read before the Lord of the sheep, and he took the book from his hand, and read it, and sealed it, and laid it down. Second period. From the time of Cyrus, to that of Alexander the Great. And forthwith I saw how the shepherds pastured for twelve hours. And behold, three of those sheep turned back and came and entered, 
and began to build up all that had fallen down of that house. But the wild boars tried to hinder them, but they were not able. And they began again to build as before, and they reared up that tower, and it was named the High Tower. And they began again to place a table before the tower, but all the bread on it was polluted and not pure. And as touching all this, the eyes of those sheep were blinded so that they saw not, and the eyes of their shepherds likewise. And they delivered them in large numbers to their shepherds for destruction, and they trampled the sheep with their feet and devoured them. And the Lord of the sheep remained unmoved till all the sheep were dispersed over the field and mingled with them the beasts, and they, the shepherds, did not save them out of the hand of the beasts. And this one who wrote the book carried it up and showed it and read it before the Lord of the sheep and implored him on their account and besought him on their account as he showed him all the doings of the shepherds and gave testimony before him against all the shepherds. And he took the actual book and laid it down beside him and departed. Third period, from Alexander the Great to the Grisho Syrian domination. Chapter 90 And I saw, till that in this manner, thirty five shepherds undertook the pasturing of the sheep, and they severally completed their periods as did the first, and others received them into their hands to pasture them for their period, each shepherd in his own period. And after that I saw in my vision all the birds of heaven coming, the eagles, the vultures, the kites, the ravens. But the eagles led all the birds, and they began to devour those sheep, and to pick out their eyes, and to devour their flesh. And the sheep cried out because their flesh was being devoured by the birds, and as for me, I looked and lamented in my sleep over that shepherd who pastured the sheep. And I saw until those sheep were devoured by the dogs and eagles and kites, and they left neither flesh nor skin nor sinew remaining on them, till only their bones stood there. And their bones, too, fell to the earth, and the sheep became few. And I saw until that twenty-three had undertaken the pasturing and completed in their several periods fifty-eight times. Fourth period, from the grisho syrian domination to the Maccabean revolt. And behold, lambs were born by those white sheep, and they began to open their eyes and to see, and to cry to the sheep. Yea, they cried to them, but they did not hearken to what they said to them, but were exceedingly deaf, and their eyes were very exceedingly blinded. And I saw in the vision how the ravens flew upon those lambs and took one of those lambs and dashed the sheep in pieces and devoured them. And I saw till horns grew upon those lambs and the ravens cast down their horns. And I saw till there sprouted a great horn out of one of those sheep and their eyes were opened. And it looked at them and it cried to the sheep and the rams saw it and all ran to it. And notwithstanding all this, those eagles and vultures and ravens and kites still kept tearing the sheep and swooping down upon them and devouring them. Still the sheep remained silent, but the rams lamented and cried out. And those ravens fought and battled with it and sought to lay low its horn, but they had no power over it. The Last Assault of the Gentiles on the Jews and I saw till the shepherds and eagles and those vultures and kites came, and they cried to the ravens that they should break the horn of that ram. And they battled and fought with it, and it battled with them, and cried that its help might come. And I saw till a great sword was given to the sheep, and the sheep proceeded against all the beasts of the field to slay them, and all the beasts and the birds of the heaven fled before their face. And I saw till that man, who wrote down the names of the shepherds and carried up into the presence of the Lord of the sheep, came and helped it 
and showed it everything. He had come down for the help of that ram. And I saw till the Lord of the sheep came unto them in wrath. And all who saw him fled, and they all fell into his shadow from before his face. Judgment of the Fallen Angels, the Shepherds, and the Apostates And I saw till a throne was erected in the pleasant land, and the Lord of the sheep sat himself thereon, and the other took the sealed books and opened those books before the Lord of the sheep. And the Lord called those men the seven first white ones, and commanded that they should bring before him beginning with the first star which led the way, all the stars whose privy members were like those of horses. And they brought them all before him. And he said to that man who wrote before him, being one of those seven white ones, and said unto him, Take those seventy shepherds to whom I deliver the sheep, and who, taking them on their own authority, slew more than I commanded them. And behold, they were all bound. I saw, and they all stood before him. And the judgment was held first over the stars, and they were judged and found guilty, and went to the place of condemnation, and they were cast into an abyss full of fire and flaming, and full of pillars of fire. And those seventy shepherds were judged and found guilty, and they were cast into that fiery abyss. And I saw at that time how a like abyss was opened in the midst of the earth full of fire, and they brought those blinded sheep, and they were all judged and found guilty and cast into this fiery abyss, and they burned. Now this abyss was to the right of that house, and I saw those sheep burning, and their bones burning. The New Jerusalem the conversion of the surviving Gentiles, the resurrection of the righteous, the Messiah. And I stood up to see till they folded up that old house and carried off all the pillars and all the beams and ornaments of the house were at the same time folded up with it. And they carried it off and laid it in a place in the south of the land. And I saw till the Lord of the sheep brought a new house greater and loftier than that first, and set it up in the place of the first, which had the bier folded up. All its pillars were new, and its ornaments were new and larger than those of the first, the old one, which he had taken away, and all the sheep were within it. When I saw all the sheep which had been left, and all the beasts on the earth, and all the birds of the heaven, falling down and doing homage to those sheep, and making petition to and obeying them in everything. And thereafter those three who were clothed in white, and had seized me by the hand who had taken me up before, and the hand of that ram also seizing hold of me, they took me up and set me down in the midst of those sheep, before the judgment took place. And those sheep were all white, and their wool was abundant and clean, and all that had been destroyed and dispersed, and all the beasts of the field, and all the birds of the heaven assembled in that house. And the Lord of the sheep rejoiced with great joy, because they were all good, and had returned to his house. And I saw till they laid down that sword which had been given to the sheep, and they brought it back into the house, and it was sealed before the presence of the Lord and all the sheep were invited into that house, but it held them not. And the eyes of them all were opened, and they saw the good, and there was not one among them that did not see. And I saw that that house was large and broad and very full, and I saw that a white bull was born with large horns, and all the beasts of the field and all the birds of the air feared him, and made petition to him all the time. And I saw till all their generations were transformed, and they all became white bulls. And the first among them became a lamb, and that lamb became a great animal, and had great black horns on its head. 
and the lord of the sheep rejoiced over it and over all the oxen. And I slept in their midst, and I awoke and saw everything. This is the vision which I saw while I slept. And I awoke and blessed the Lord of righteousness and gave him glory. Then I wept with a great weeping, and my tears stayed not till I could no longer endure it. When I saw, they flowed on account of what I had seen. For everything shall come and be fulfilled, and all the deeds of men in their order were shown unto me. On that night I remembered the first dream, and because of it I wept and was troubled, because I had seen that vision. The Concluding Section of the Book Enoch's Book of Admonition for His Children Chapter 91 The Book, Written by Enoch Enoch indeed wrote this complete doctrine of wisdom, which is praised of all men, and a judge of all the earth. For all my children who shall dwell on the earth, and for the future generations who shall observe uprightness and peace. Let not your spirit be troubled on account of the times. For the Holy and Great One has appointed days for all things. And the Righteous One shall arise from sleep, shall arise and walk in the paths of righteousness. And all his path and conversation shall be in eternal goodness and grace. He will be gracious to the righteous and give him eternal uprightness. And he will give him power so that he shall be endowed with goodness and righteousness, and he shall walk in eternal light. And sin shall perish in darkness for ever, and shall no more be seen from that day for evermore. Enoch's Admonition to His Children Chapter 92 And now, my son Methuselah, call to me all thy brothers, and gather together to me all the sons of thy mother. For the word calls me, and the Spirit is poured out upon me, that I may show you everything that shall befall you for ever. And thereupon Methuselah went and summoned to him all his brothers, and assembled his relatives. And he spake unto all the children of righteousness, and said, Hear, ye sons of Enoch, all the words of your father, and hearken aright to the voice of my mouth. For I exhort you and say unto you, Beloved, Love uprightness, and walk therein, and draw not nigh to uprightness with a double heart, and associate not with those of a double heart, but walk in righteousness, my sons, and it shall guide you on good paths, and righteousness shall be your companion. For I know that violence must increase on the earth, and a great chastisement be executed on the earth, and all unrighteousness come to an end. Yea, it shall be cut off from its roots, and its whole structure be destroyed. And unrighteousness shall again be consummated on the earth, and all the deeds of unrighteousness and of violence and transgression shall prevail in a twofold degree. And when sin and unrighteousness and blasphemy and violence in all kinds of deeds increase, and apostasy and transgression and uncleanness increase, a great chastisement shall come from heaven upon all these, and the Holy Lord will come forth with wrath and chastisement to execute judgment on earth. In those days violence shall be cut off from its roots and the roots of unrighteousness together with deceit, and they shall be destroyed from under heaven. And all the idols of the heathen shall be abandoned, and the temples burned with fire, and they shall remove them from the whole earth. And they, the heathen, shall be cast into the judgment of fire, and they shall perish in wrath and in grievous judgment for ever. And the righteous shall arise from their sleep, and wisdom shall arise and be given unto them. And after that the roots of unrighteousness shall be cut off, and the sinners shall be destroyed by the sword, shall be cut off from the blasphemers in every place, 
and those who plan violence, and those who commit blasphemy, shall perish by the sword. And now I tell you, my sons, and show you the paths of righteousness and the paths of violence. Yea, I will show them to you again, that ye may know what will come to pass. And now hearken unto me, my sons, and walk in the paths of righteousness, and walk not in the paths of violence. For all who walk in the paths of unrighteousness shall perish for ever. The Apocalypse of Weeks Chapter 93 And after that Enoch both gave and began to recount from the books. And Enoch said, Concerning the children of righteousness, and concerning the elect of the world, and concerning the plant of uprightness, I will speak these things. Yea, I, Enoch, will declare them unto you, my sons, according to that which appeared to me in the heavenly vision, and which I have known through the word of the holy angels, and have learnt from the heavenly tablets. And Enoch began to recount from the books, and said, I was born the seventh in the first week, while judgment and righteousness still endured. And after me there shall arise in the second week great wickedness, and deceit shall have sprung up, and in it there shall be the first end, and in it a man shall be saved, and after it is ended unrighteousness shall grow up, and a law shall be made for the sinners. And after that, in the third week at its close, a man shall be elected as the plant of righteous judgment, and his posterity shall become the plant of righteousness for evermore. And after that, in the fourth week, at its close, visions of the holy and righteous shall be seen, and a law for all generations, and an enclosure shall be made for them. And after that, in the fifth week, at its close, the house of glory and dominion shall be built for ever. And after that, in the sixth week, all who live in it shall be blinded, and the hearts of all of them shall godlessly forsake wisdom. And in it a man shall ascend, and at its close the house of dominion shall be burnt with fire, and the whole race of the chosen root shall be dispersed. And after that, in the seventh week, shall an apostate generation arise, and many shall be its deeds, and all its deeds shall be apostate. And at its close shall be elected the elect righteous of the eternal plant of righteousness, to receive sevenfold instruction concerning all his creation. For who is there of all the children of men that is able to hear the voice of the Holy One without being troubled? And who can think his thoughts? And who is there that can behold all the works of heaven? And how should there be one who could behold the heaven, and who is there that could understand the things of heaven, and see a soul or a spirit, and could tell thereof, or ascend, and see all their ends, and think them, or do like them? And who is there of all men that could know what is the breadth and the length of the earth, and to whom has been shown the measure of all of them? Or is there any one who could discern the length of the heaven, and how great is its height, and upon what it is founded, and how great is the number of the stars, and where all the luminaries rest? The Last Three Weeks Chapter 94 And after that there shall be another, the eighth week, that of righteousness. And a sword shall be given to it, that a righteous judgment may be executed on the oppressors. And sinners shall be delivered into the hands of the righteous. And at its close they shall acquire houses through their righteousness. And a house shall be built for the great king in glory for evermore. And all mankind shall look to the path of uprightness. And after that, in the ninth week, the righteous judgment shall be revealed to the whole world, and all the works of the godless shall vanish from all the earth, and the world shall be written down for destruction. 
And after this, in the tenth week, in the seventh part, there shall be the great eternal judgment in which he will execute vengeance among the angels. And the first heaven will depart and pass away, and a new heaven shall appear. And the powers of the heavens shall give sevenfold light. And after that, there will be many weeks without number forever, and all shall be in goodness and righteousness, and sin shall no more be mentioned for ever. Admonitions to the Righteous Chapter 95 And now I say unto you, my sons, love righteousness and walk therein, for the paths of righteousness are worthy of acceptation, but the paths of unrighteousness shall suddenly be destroyed and vanish. And to certain men of a generation shall the paths of violence and of death be revealed, and they shall hold themselves afar from them, and shall not follow them. And now I say unto the righteous, Walk not in the paths of wickedness, nor in the paths of death, and draw not nigh to them, lest ye be destroyed. But seek and choose for yourselves righteousness and an elect life, and walk in the paths of peace, and ye shall live and prosper. And hold fast my words in the thoughts of your hearts, and suffer them not to be effaced from your hearts. For I know that sinners will tempt men to evilly entreat wisdom, so that no place may be found for her, and no manner of temptation may minish. Woes for the sinners Woe to those who build unrighteousness and oppression, and lay deceit as a foundation. For they shall be suddenly overthrown, and they shall have no peace. Woe to those who build their houses with sin, for from all their foundations shall they be overthrown, and by the sword shall they fall. And those who acquire gold and silver in judgment suddenly shall perish. Woe to you, ye rich, for ye have trusted in your riches, and from your riches shall ye depart, because ye have not remembered the Most High in the days of your riches. Ye have committed blasphemy and unrighteousness, and have become ready for the day of slaughter, and the day of darkness, and the day of the great judgment. Thus I speak and declare unto you, He who hath created you will overthrow you, and for your fall there shall be no compassion, and your Creator will rejoice at your destruction. And your righteous ones in those days shall be a reproach to the sinners and the godless. Enoch's Grief Fresh Woes Against the Sinners Chapter 96 Oh, that mine eyes were a cloud of waters that I might weep over you, and pour down my tears as a cloud of waters, that so I might rest from my trouble of heart. Who has permitted you to practice reproaches and wickedness, and so judgment shall overtake you, sinners? Fear not the sinners, ye righteous. For again will the Lord deliver them into your hands, that ye may execute judgment upon them according to your desires. Woe to you who fulminate anathemas which cannot be reversed. Healing shall therefore be far from you because of your sins. Woe to you who requite your neighbor with evil, for ye shall be requited according to your works. Woe to you, lying witnesses, and to those who weigh out injustice, for suddenly shall ye perish. Woe to you, sinners, for ye persecute the righteous, for ye shall be delivered up and persecuted because of injustice, and heavy shall its yoke be upon you. The Evils in Store for Sinners and the Possessors of Unrighteous Wealth Chapter 97 Believe, ye righteous, that the sinners will become a shame, and perish in the day of unrighteousness. Be it known unto you, ye sinners, that the Most High is mindful of your destruction, and the angels of heaven rejoice over your destruction. What will ye do, ye sinners? And whither will ye flee on that day of judgment, when ye hear the voice of the prayer of the righteous? 
Yea, ye shall fare like unto them, against whom this word shall be a testimony, ye have been a companion of sinners. And in those days the prayer of the righteous shall reach unto the Lord, and for you the days of your judgment shall come. And all the words of your unrighteousness shall be read out before the great Holy One, and your faces shall be covered with shame. And he will reject every work which is grounded on unrighteousness. Woe to you, ye sinners, who live on the mid-ocean and on the dry land, whose remembrance is evil against you. Woe to you who acquire silver and gold in unrighteousness, and say, We have become rich with riches, and have possessions, and have acquired everything we have desired. And now let us do what we purposed, for we have gathered silver and many are the husbandmen in our houses, and our granaries are brim-full as with water. Yea, and like water your lies shall flow away, for your riches shall not abide, but speedily ascend from you. For ye have acquired it all in unrighteousness, and ye shall be given over to a great curse. Self-indulgence of sinners, sin originated by man, all sin recorded in heaven, woes for the sinners. Chapter 98 And now I swear unto you, to the wise and to the foolish, for ye shall have manifold experiences on the earth. For ye men shall put on more adornments than a woman, and coloured garments more than a virgin in royalty, and in grandeur, and in power, and in silver, and in gold, and in purple, and in splendor, and in food, shall they be poured out as water. Therefore they shall be found wanting in doctrine and wisdom, and they shall perish thereby together with their possessions, and with all their glory, and their splendor, and in shame, and in slaughter, and in great destitution, their spirits shall be cast into the furnace of fire. I have sworn unto you, ye sinners, as a mountain has not become a slave, and a hill does not become the handmaid of a woman, even so sin has not been sent upon the earth, but man of himself has created it, and under a great curse shall they fall who commit it. And barrenness has not been given to the woman, but on account of the deeds of her own hands she dies without children. I have sworn unto you, ye sinners, by the Holy Great One, that all your evil deeds are revealed in the heavens, and that none of your deeds of oppression are covered and hidden. And do not think in your spirit, nor say in your heart, that ye do not know, and that ye do not see, that every sin is every day recorded in heaven, in the presence of the Most High. From henceforth ye know that all your oppression, wherewith ye oppress, is written down every day, till the day of your judgment. Woe to you, ye fools, for through your folly shall ye perish, and ye transgress against the wise, and so good hap shall not be your portion. And now know ye that ye are prepared for the day of destruction. Wherefore do not hope to live, ye sinners, but ye shall depart and die, for ye know no ransom for ye are prepared for the day of the great judgment, for the day of tribulation and great shame for your spirits. Woe to you, ye obstinate of heart, who work wickedness and eat blood. Whence have ye good things to eat and to drink and to be filled? From all the good things which the Lord Most High has placed in abundance on the earth. Therefore ye shall have no peace. Woe to you who love the deeds of unrighteousness! Wherefore do ye hope for good hap unto yourselves? Know that ye shall be delivered into the hands of the righteous, and they shall cut off your necks, and slay you, and have no mercy upon you. Woe to you who rejoice in the tribulation of the righteous! For no grave shall be dug for you. Woe to you who set at naught the words of the righteous! for ye shall have no hope of life. Woe to you who write down lying and godless words, 
for they write down their lies that men may hear them and act godlessly towards their neighbor. Therefore they shall have no peace, but die a sudden death. Woes pronounced on the godless, the lawbreakers, evil plight of sinners in the last days. Further woes. Chapter 99 Woe to you who work godlessness, and glory in lying, and extol them. Ye shall perish, and no happy life shall be yours. Woe to them who pervert the words of uprightness, and transgress the eternal law, and transform themselves into what they were not, into sinners. They shall be trodden under foot upon the earth. In those days make ready, ye righteous, to raise your prayers as a memorial, and place them as a testimony before the angels, that they may place the sin of the sinners for a memorial before the Most High. In those days the nations shall be stirred up, and the families of the nations shall arise on the day of destruction. And in those days the destitute shall go forth and carry off their children, and they shall abandon them, so that their children shall perish through them. Yea, they shall abandon their children that are still sucklings, and not return to them, and shall have no pity on their beloved ones. And again I swear to you, ye sinners, that sin is prepared for a day of unceasing bloodshed. And they who worship stones and grave images of gold and silver and wood and stone and clay, and those who worship impure spirits and demons and all kinds of idols not according to knowledge, shall get no manner of help from them. And they shall become godless by reason of the folly of their hearts. And their eyes shall be blinded through the fear of their hearts and through visions in their dreams. Through these they shall become godless and fearful, for they shall have wrought all their work in a lie, and shall have worshipped a stone. Therefore in an instant shall they perish. But in those days blessed are all they who accept the words of wisdom, and understand them, and observe the paths of the Most High, and walk in the path of his righteousness, and become not godless with the godless, for they shall be saved. Woe to you who spread evil to your neighbors, for you shall be slain in Sheol. Woe to you who make deceitful and false measures, and to them who cause bitterness on the earth, for they shall thereby be utterly consumed. Woe to you who build your houses through the grievous toil of others and all their building materials are bricks and stones of sin. I tell you, ye shall have no peace. Woe to them who reject the measure and eternal heritage of their fathers, and whose souls follow after idols, for they shall have no rest. Woe to them who work unrighteousness and help oppression and slay their neighbors until the day of the great judgment. For he shall cast down your glory, and bring affliction on your hearts, and shall arouse his fierce indignation, and destroy you all with the sword. And all the holy and righteous shall remember your sins. The sinners destroy each other. Judgment of the fallen angels. The safety of the righteous. Further woes for the sinners. Chapter 100 And in those days, in one place, the fathers together with their sons shall be smitten, and brothers one with another shall fall in death, till the streams flow with their blood. For a man shall not withhold his hand from slaying his sons and his sons' sons, and the sinner shall not withhold his hand from his honored brother. From dawn till sunset they shall slay one another. And the horse shall walk up to the breast in the blood of sinners, and the chariot shall be submerged to its height. In those days the angels shall descend into the secret places, and gather together into one place all those who brought down sin. And the Most High will arise on that day of judgment to execute great judgment amongst sinners. 
And over the righteous and holy he will appoint guardians from amongst the holy angels to guard them as the apple of an eye, until he makes an end of all wickedness and all sin. And though the righteous sleep a long sleep, they have naught to fear. And then the children of the earth shall see the wise in security, and shall understand all the words of this book and recognize that their riches shall not be able to save them in the overthrow of their sins. Woe to you sinners on the day of strong anguish, ye who afflict the righteous and burn them with fire, ye shall be requited according to your works. Woe to you, ye obstinate of heart, who watch in order to devise wickedness, therefore fear shall come upon you and there shall be none to help you. Woe to you, ye sinners, on account of the words of your mouth, and on account of the deeds of your hands, which your godlessness has wrought, in blazing flames, burning worse than fire, shall ye burn. And now know ye that from the angels ye will inquire as to your deeds in heaven, from the sun and from the moon, and from the stars in reference to your sins, because upon earth ye execute judgment on the righteous. And he will summon to testify against you every cloud and mist and dew and rain, for they shall all be withheld because of you from descending upon you, and they shall be mindful of your sins. And now give presence to the rain, that it be not withheld from descending upon you, nor yet the dew, when it has received gold and silver from you, that it may descend. When the hoar-frost and snow with their chilliness, and all the snowstorms with all their plagues fall upon you, in those days ye shall not be able to stand before them. Exhortation to the Fear of God All nature fears him, but not the sinners. Chapter 101 Observe the heaven, ye children of heaven, and every work of the Most High, and fear ye him, and work no evil in his presence. If he closes the windows of heaven, and withholds the rain and the dew from descending on the earth on your account, what will he do then? And if he sends his anger upon you because of your deeds, ye cannot petition him, for ye spake proud and insolent words against his righteousness. Therefore ye shall have no peace. And see ye not the sailors of the ships, how their ships are tossed to and fro by the waves, and are shaken by the winds, and are in sore trouble? And therefore do they fear, because all their goodly possessions go upon the sea with them. And they have evil forebodings of heart, that the sea will swallow them, and they will perish therein. Are not the entire sea and all its waters, and all its movements, the work of the Most High? And has he not set limits to its doings, and confined it throughout by the sand? And at his reproof it is afraid, and dries up, and all its fish die, and all that is in it. But ye sinners that are on the earth, fear him not. Has he not made the heaven and the earth, and all that is therein, who has given understanding and wisdom to everything that moves on the earth and in the sea? Do not the sailors of the ships fear the sea? Yet sinners fear not the Most High. Terrors of the Day of Judgment The Adverse Fortunes of the Righteous on the Earth Chapter 102 in those days when he hath brought a grievous fire upon you, whither will he flee, and where will he find deliverance? And when he launches forth his word against you, will he not be affrighted and fear? And all the luminaries shall be affrighted with great fear, and the earth shall be affrighted and tremble and be alarmed, and all the angels shall execute their commands, and shall seek to hide themselves from the presence of the great glory and the children of earth shall tremble and quake, and ye sinners shall be cursed for ever, and ye shall have no peace. Fear ye not, ye souls of the righteous, and be hopeful, 
ye that have died in righteousness. And grieve not if your soul into Sheol has descended in grief, and that in your life your body fared not according to your goodness. But wait for the day of the judgment of sinners, and for the day of cursing and chastisement. And yet, when ye die, the sinners speak over you. As we die, so die the righteous, and what benefit do they reap for their deeds? Behold, even as we, so do they die in grief and darkness. And what have they more than we? From henceforth we are equal. And what will they receive, and what will they see for ever? Behold, they too have died, and henceforth from ever shall they see no light. I tell you, ye sinners, ye are content to eat and drink and rob and sin and strip men naked and acquire wealth and see good days. Have ye seen the righteous, how their end falls out, that no manner of violence is found in them till their death? Nevertheless, they perished, and became as though they had not been, and their spirits descended into Sheol in tribulation. Different Destinies of the Righteous and the Sinners Fresh Objections of the Sinners Chapter 103 Now therefore I swear to you, the righteous, by the glory of the great and honoured and mighty one in dominion, and by his greatness I swear to you, I know a mystery, and have read the heavenly tablets, and have seen the holy books, and have found written therein and inscribed regarding them, that all goodness and joy and glory are prepared for them, and written down for the spirits of those who have died in righteousness, and that manifold good shall be given to you in recompense for your labours, and that your lot is abundantly beyond the lot of the living. And the spirits of you who have died in righteousness shall live and rejoice, and their spirits shall not perish, nor their memorial from the face of the Great One unto all the generations of the world. Wherefore no longer fear their contumely. Woe to you, ye sinners, when ye have died, if ye die in the wealth of your sins, and those who are like you say regarding you, Blessed are the sinners, they have seen all their days, and how they've died in prosperity and in wealth, and have not seen tribulation or murder in their life, and they have died in honour, and judgment has not been executed on them during their life. Know ye that their souls will be made to descend into Sheol, and they shall be wretched in their great tribulation, and into darkness and chains and a burning flame where there is grievous judgment shall your spirits enter, and the great judgment shall be for all the generations of the world. Woe to you, for ye shall have no peace. Say not in regard to the righteous and good who are in life. In our troubled days we have toiled laboriously and experienced every trouble, and met with much evil and been consumed, and have become few and our spirits small, and we have been destroyed and have not found any to help us even with a word. We have been tortured and destroyed and not hoped to see life from day to day. We hope to be the head and have become the tail. We have toiled laboriously and had no satisfaction in our toil, and we have become the food of the sinners and the unrighteous, and they have laid their yoke heavily upon us. They have had dominion over us that hated us and smote us, and to those that hated us we have bowed our necks, but they pitied us not. We desired to get away from them that we might escape and be at rest, but found no place whereunto we could flee and be safe from them and are complained to the rulers in our tribulation, and cried out against those who devoured us, but they did not attend to our cries, and would not hearken to our voice. And they helped those who robbed us, and devoured us, and those who made us few, and they concealed their oppression, and they did not remove from us the yoke of those that devoured us, and dispersed us, and murdered us, and they concealed their murder, and remembered not that they had lifted up their hands against us. Assurances given to the righteous, admonitions to sinners and the falsifiers of the words of uprightness. Chapter 104 
I swear unto you that in heaven the angels remember you for good before the glory of the Great One, and your names are written down before the glory of the Great One. Be hopeful, for aforetime you were put to shame through ill and affliction, but now ye shall shine as the lights of heaven. Ye shall shine, and ye shall be seen, and the portals of heaven shall be opened to you. And in your cry, cry for judgment, and it shall appear to you. For all your tribulation shall be visited on the rulers, and on all who helped those who plundered you. Be hopeful, and cast not away your hopes, for ye shall have great joy as the angels of heaven. What shall ye be obliged to do? Ye shall not have to hide on the day of the great judgment, and ye shall not be found as sinners, and the eternal judgment shall be far from you for all the generations of the world. And now fear not, ye righteous, when ye see the sinners growing strong and prospering in their ways. Be not companions with them, but keep afar from their violence, for ye shall become companions of the hosts of heaven. And although ye sinners say, All our sins shall not be searched out and be written down, nevertheless they shall write down all your sins every day. And now I show unto you that light and darkness, day and night, see all your sins. Be not godless in your hearts, and lie not, and alter not the words of uprightness, nor charge with lying the words of the Holy Great One, nor take account of your idols, for all your lying and all your godlessness issue not in righteousness, but in great sin. And now I know this mystery, that sinners will alter and pervert the words of righteousness in many ways, and will speak wicked words, and lie, and practice great deceits, and write books concerning their words. But when they write down truthfully all my words in their languages, and do not change or minish aught from my words, but write them all down truthfully, all that I first testified concerning them. Then I know another mystery, that books will be given to the righteous and the wise to become a cause of joy and uprightness and much wisdom. And to them shall the books be given, and they shall believe in them and rejoice over them. And then shall all the righteous who have learnt therefrom all the paths of uprightness be recompensed. God and the Messiah to dwell with man. Chapter 105 In those days the Lord bade them to summon and testify to the children of earth concerning their wisdom. Show it unto them, for ye are their guides and a recompense over the whole earth. For I and my Son will be united with them for ever in the paths of uprightness in their lives, and ye shall have peace. Rejoice, ye children of uprightness. Amen. Fragment of the Book of Noah Chapter 106 And after some days my son Methuselah took a wife for his son Lamech, and she became pregnant by him, and bore a son. And his body was white as snow, and red as the blooming of a rose, and the hair of his head and his long locks were white as wool, and his eyes beautiful. And when he opened his eyes, he lighted up the whole house like the sun, and the whole house was very bright. And thereupon he arose in the hands of the midwife, opened his mouth, and conversed, with the Lord of Righteousness. And his father Lamech was afraid of him, and fled, and came to his father Methuselah, and he said unto him, I have forgotten a strange son, diverse from and unlike man, and resembling the sons of the God of heaven. And his nature is different, and he's not like us. And his eyes are as the rays of the sun, and his countenance is glorious. And it seems to me that he's not sprung from me, but from the angels. And I fear that in his days a wonder may be wrought on the earth. 
and now, my father, I am here to petition thee, and implore thee that thou mayest go to Enoch, our father, and learn from him the truth, for his dwelling place is amongst the angels. And when Methuselah heard the words of his son, he came to me to the ends of the earth, for he had heard that I was there. And he cried aloud, and I heard his voice, and I came to him. And I said to him, Behold, here I am, my son, wherefore hast thou come to me? And he answered and said, Because of a great cause of anxiety have I come to thee, and because of a disturbing vision have I approached. And now, my father, hear me. Unto Lamech, my son, there hath been born a son, the like of whom there is none, and his nature is not like man's nature and the colour of his body is whiter than snow, and redder than the bloom of a rose, and the hair of his head is whiter than white wool, and his eyes are like the rays of the sun. And he opened his eyes, and thereupon lighted up the whole house. And he arose in the hands of the midwife, and opened his mouth, and blessed the Lord of heaven. And his father Lamech became afraid, and fled to me, and did not believe that he was sprung from him but that he was in the likeness of the angels of heaven. And behold, I have come to thee, that thou mayest make known to me the truth. And I, Enoch, answered and said unto him, The Lord will do a new thing on the earth, and this I have already seen in a vision, and made known to thee that in the generation of my father Jared, some of the angels of heaven transgressed the word of the Lord. And behold, they commit sin and transgress the law, and have united themselves with women, and commit sin with them, and have married some of them, and have forgot children by them. And they shall produce on the earth giants, not according to the spirit, but according to the flesh. And there shall be a great punishment on the earth, and the earth shall be cleansed from all impurity. Yea, there shall come a great destruction over the whole earth, and there shall be a deluge and a great destruction for one year. And this son who has been born unto you shall be left on the earth, and his three children shall be saved with him, when all mankind that are on the earth shall die. He and his sons shall be saved. And now make known to thy son Lamech that he who has been born is in truth his son, and call his name Noah, for he shall be left to you, and he and his sons shall be saved from the destruction which shall come upon the earth on account of all the sin and all the unrighteousness which shall be consummated on the earth in his days. And after that there shall be still more unrighteousness than that which was first consummated on the earth. For I know the mysteries of the holy ones. For he the Lord has showed me and informed me, and I have read them in the heavenly tablets. Chapter 107 And I saw written on them that generation upon generation shall transgress till a generation of righteousness arises, and transgression is destroyed, and sin passes away from the earth, and all manner of good comes upon it. And now, my son, go and make known to thy son Lamech that this son which has been born is in truth his son, and that this is no lie. And when Methuselah had heard the words of his father Enoch, for he had shown to him everything in secret, he returned and showed them to him, and called the name of that son Noah, for he will comfort the earth after all the destruction. <laughs>